Welcome to Central Church's online devotional ministry. These short devotions are intended to provide inspiration and hope to all people, including our friends, neighbors, and church members. We hope that you find them both meaningful and helpful as you search for spiritual food. It's our prayer that you discover new ways to serve Christ and be about His work in the world. Here's Pastor Bob. Hello. We're in the fourth week of Advent, now uh, less than a week from the day of Christmas to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christmas is a season of light. We know that in this world there is a great deal of darkness. There was darkness in the world when Jesus was born and there is darkness in the world today. In the book of the prophet Isaiah chapter 9 verses 2 through 7, a well-known passage that is often read at Christmas time and of course was used by Handel in the Messiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, and those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the trampling warrior in battle tumult, and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For unto us a child is born, for us to a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Isaiah begins by talking about the deep darkness, the distress, the very dangerous situation, the impenetrable darkness that people find themselves in. That has been true many times, and it is true in this year of 2023, where we see that wars rage around the world. Conflict is taking place in many places, and there is division, deep division, in American society and other societies. There is cruelty. There are many refugees that have nowhere to go. There is much addiction. And it seems that many people simply say no when it comes to help, when it comes to aid, when it comes to mercy, when it comes to compassion. If Jesus were born in 2023, this year, the shepherds would not be allowed to go out into the fields around Bethlehem. The Magi would not be able to get to Bethlehem, or barriers would prevent them. Mary and Joseph would not be able to make it through Gaza on their way to Egypt as they were fleeing from Herod. But the spirit of Herod the Great, who breathed out murder and carried out murder against the children of Bethlehem, the spirit of Herod is live and well across this world. But a light has shined in the darkness, says the prophet. Light has dawned, and there will be increase, and there will be joy, and there will be the destruction of the implements of war. And all of this comes about by the birth of a child, the Messiah, the Son of God, who is also the Son of Mary. And that brings us to the Magnificat of Mary, another passage in the Bible read at this time of the year, found in Luke's Gospel, chapter 1. Now, Mary was a teenage girl. But in the Magnificat, we see that Mary demonstrates a considerable knowledge of the Bible and great discernment. The Magnificat contains at least 17 Old Testament references. Let us read the words of the Magnificat. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. 
for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Let's take a look at the content of the Song of Mary. She begins by glorifying God, her Savior. He is her Savior, and he is our Savior. She recognizes her humble place, yet the unique role that she has. She is the mother of Jesus. She is the mother of the Messiah the Son of God who is the Son of Man, and she recognizes that she will be blessed among all generations, that she is in a unique place that no other human being could ever hold. She also recognizes the greatness of God and the mercy of God and the action of God, the presence of God, all of these things present from generation to generation to all generations. The nature of God does not change from one century to another, from one generation to another, the nature of God remains the same. A God of salvation, a God of mercy, a God of compassion, a God of action. And so she recognizes that rulers are brought down, many who practice injustice over history. And there have been many, and there are many in the world today. They will not stand. There's an old hymn that used to be sung, no longer appears in the hymnals, Oh, where are kings and empires now? The Roman Empire, where is it? The British Empire, gone. The sun sets on it nowadays. The empire of Genghis Khan, all gone. But the humble and the poor, those who are humble in spirit and those who are poor in reality, they will be lifted up. And the hungry will be given good things and the rich will be sent away empty. The mercy of God is remembered forever, in perpetuity, continually, eternally. That is God's nature. Now, the program of God is not the program of empire. It's not the program of Herod, who sat upon the throne in Judea when Jesus was born. It's not the program of the ruling council, not the program of the landlord, of the oligarchs, not the program of the elite, not the program of controlling interests now and then of those who would practice oppression and injustice, not the program of greed and accumulation of lies and deceit. In this season of Christmas, 2023, a season where there is much darkness in the world, but the light has shined, let us consider the words of Mary and may the light, that light that she spoke of, the light that the prophet Isaiah spoke of, shine upon us and shine from us as well. Let us pray. Our Lord and God, we thank you that the light, Jesus Christ, our Lord, has come. We know that that light shines brightly. May it shine brightly in our world this year. And may it shine upon us, shine from us, and shine within us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We invite you to visit our church website at cpctoranum.org to learn more about our ministries. You can also visit us on Facebook at Central Presbyterian Church Tarenum. Please join us as we renew lives, inspire hope, and serve others. God bless you.